Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Um, friends, as it is a slow moving time with uh, genomic stocks, it's an opportunity to know our investments better. Earlier I had done a deep dive into CTX 130. Today I'm going to do something similar with CTX 110. I'm going to talk about how it works and the competitors and their pricing and the current state of play in the treatment of B-cell lymphomas. And I think when you uh, see my analysis out here, you're going to feel bullish about CRISPR. But before I proceed, I request that if you watch our videos and have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Push us to the 5,000 subscriber level. If you're already a subscriber, please consider pressing the join button and becoming a member to help grow this channel. That said, let's get started. <music> Welcome back friends. I hold CRISPR in my portfolio and I suspect many of you uh, do too. Earlier we were discussing at a high level the prospects of gene editing and genomic medicines and bought, the, bought into the overall premise that this is the future of medicine and as we approach monetization it's interesting to see that big pharma already have gene therapies in the market and CRISPR therapeutics with its CTX110 will likely compete with one from BMS and uh, probably one from Gilead and one from Novartis. So let's check the field and see how they are all doing. Currently the indication that CTX110 targets is being treated with chemotherapy as the first line of treatment and only after it fails and if the patient is not capable of accepting a bone marrow transplant, then BMS uh, Brianzi is allowed to be uh, used. So Brianzi has demonstrated clinically meaningful and statistically significant improvements in event-free survival, that is EFS, complete responses, and progression-free survival uh, compared to standard therapy in patients with LBCL. That is the primary refractory or relapsed within uh, 12 months after the first line therapy. An improvement in uh, EFS represents an increase in the length of time in which patients are alive and without disease progression or in need of further treatment. Brianzi is a differentiated uh, CAR T cell therapy and is made from a patient's own T cell, so it is autologous, which all um, the patient's T cells are collected and genetically engineered to become CAR T cells. They are then delivered via infusion as a one-time treatment. Brianzi can be administered in the inpatient or outpatient setting at a certified tra tra treatment center. So the point to note here is that Brianzi is uh, autologous and needs patient to donate cells. And as a result, we have the lead time and collection uh, centers, etc., as collection uh, as the treat as the treatment infrastructure. And there is also a lead time between when the patient comes in and when they require uh, the product and from the time that they harvest to process and bring it back. So all of this takes time. The second challenge for Rayanzi is that the FDA will not allow it as a first line of treatment due to cytokine release syndrome and neurological uh, toxicities. So CTX110, on the other hand, is an allogenic therapy. So in an allogenic therapy, it's a healthy donor cells that are coming. Whereas in the autologous therapy, it's a weak, uh, weak uh, T cells coming from a patient. So if you look at this graphic here, I'm going to take you into the CRISPR therapy, uh, uh, therapeutics um, uh, web website. You may not see me for a while, but you'll hear me. I want to walk you through this because you have to understand clearly what a superior product CTX110 is. So I'm going to walk you through the difference between autologous and uh, allogenic, talking about their advantages and disadvantages. And then I'm going to talk specifically about three edits that are done on CTX110, what is the import importance of each one of them, and what are the risks that are still prevalent for CTX110, in my opinion, as a non-scientist, but more as an investor who is studying this uh, field in detail. Um, so I'm going to offer those uh, points to you. I'm also going to talk after that about the pricing. Okay, so let's uh, get into the CRISPR uh, website. Well, friends, here we are in the CRISPR Therapeutics website, and I'm looking at this particular diagram out here, which shows what happens with the autologous treatment, which is what uh, the current uh, standard of care is as a second line, and in which the patient uh, is not healthy. Remember, he's suffering from cancer, and 
uh, the T cells are likely to be weak because they have gone through chemotherapy and all before they come for uh, autologous treatment. So uh, apheresis happens, which is taking harvesting the T cells, and then uh, it's modified and quality controlled and multiplied, and then there's a single infusion that happens. So it takes time, week one, week two, week three. It could be longer as well, depending on the logistics and how things go. And the, by the time that the therapy comes back, the, uh, the patient's position would have deteriorated further. Now, if you look at an allogenic um, a therapy like CTX110, it's coming from a healthy donor cell. And uh, those cells are harvested, they are manufactured, and hundreds of doses are made and readily available on the shelf to be transfused immediately on requirement, regardless of who the patient is. So if you were to look at the edits that have been done, uh, in uh, in the CTX110 uh, therapy. So a healthy donor T cell is taken and MHC1 is knocked out, TCR is knocked out, a CAR is uh, installed. So this CAR uh, is the one that does the job of uh, zo zooming in on CD19 and um, doing its magic. So let us look at the three edits that are out here. The first one is chimeric antigen receptor, which allows CAR T cells to target and kill cancer cells. The CAR T has two key domains, one that binds to the surface of cancer cell and the other that activates the T cell. The current generation of CAR T products uses randomly integrating viruses to deliver CAR T construct to the DNA or T cells. In contrast, we use CRISPR-Cas9 to insert CAR T construct precisely into TCR alpha construct track locus, which we expect to result in safer and more consistent production. So it's not relying on chance, it's actually uh, CRISPR-Cas9 inserted into the T cell to perform a specific modification, which leads to the creation of the chimeric antigen receptor. The next one is TCR. T cells used, use T cell receptor. So the TCR which has been knocked out, it would have existed before knocking out, and this is what the T cell uses in order to latch on to antigens. So to recognize and kill uh, cells presenting foreign antigens, a sign of infection, thereby providing immunity from disease. Donor T cells could also recognize a patient's cells as foreign uh, through this receptor, leading to an unwanted side effect known as graft versus host disease, the famous GVHD. We use CRISPR-Cas9 to eliminate TCR with high efficiency, which reduces the risk of graft versus host disease occurring during off-the-shelf use. So if it is put into any patient's body, the chances of the patient's body rejecting the T cells is reduced significantly because of the TCR knockout. And then we have MHC1 knockout to improve CAR T cell persistence and increase the chance uh, for durable remissions. Uh, we use uh, CRISPR-Cas9 to eliminate the class one major histocompatibility complex expressed on the surface of CAR-T product candidates. If present, MHC1 could lead to rejection of the CAR-T product by the patient's own T cells. These are CD8 T cells which will target and kill um, the CAR-T uh, if it expresses MHC1. So the, this will uh, now allow the uh, the suppression of MHC1 is going to allow the um, uh, CAR T cell to escape from CD8 T cells. Eliminating this mole molecule should uh, mitigate that effect. And well, friends, based on my studies, right, um, uh, when it comes to cytokine release syndrome, the TCR knockout is helpful. Uh, here is what I have gathered so far about TCR knockout, and we'll find out more about it during the clinical trial of CTX110. I believe the removal or knockdown of the T cell receptor or TCR in CAR T cell therapy is an approach that has been explored to potentially mitigate cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity, two common adverse uh, events associated with CAR T cell therapy. And CRISPR uh, therapeutics has done this so that instead of being second line treatment, it can become first line treatment and therefore superior to the offering of Gilead, uh, BMS, uh, and uh, the other uh, Novartis. So it will be superior to all three of them. And uh, that's the reason why they have done it. However, this approach is known as TCR deficient CAR T cell therapy. While it may have some potential benefits, it also ra raises important considerations and challenges. 
And here are some key points to consider while rega with regard to TCR deficient CAR T cell therapy and its potential uh, impact on uh, uh, cytokine release syndrome. The potential benefits are that reduced uh, allo reactivity, uh, which is by removing or disrupting the TCR, CAR T cells are less likely to recognize and attack healthy cells with mismatched uh, MHC1 uh, molecules, thereby reducing the risk of graft versus ho host disease and off-target ta toxicities. Uh, reduction in CRS uh, is the major benefit. Uh, TCR deficient uh, CAR T cells may exhibit reduced uh, activation and proliferation upon encountering target antigens. This could potentially lead to a less intense cytokine response and reduce severity of CRS. However, the challenges and consideration that one has to keep in mind is the effectiveness. While TCR deficient CAR T cells may be associated with reduced CRS, they may also be less effective in recognizing and killing target cells. TCRs play a critical role in the immune response and their removal could uh, impact that CAR T cells efficacy against other infections. Then there are safety concerns. The safety of uh, TCR deficient CAR T cell therapy is a significant concern because TCR helps prevent the development of malignancies and uh, it also helps to control viral infections. Removing or disrupting the TCR could potentially compromise the patient's immune surveillance and increase the risk of infections or other uh, complications. And of course, then we are looking at the optimal design. The optimal design of TCR deficient CAR T cells is an area of active research uh, in uh, at present, in my opinion, and various strategies such as T-share knockout or knockdown are being explored, and the cho choice of uh, strategy may impact uh, both the safety as well as the efficacy of the therapy. And also the decision to use TCR deficient CAR T cells should be individualized based on the uh, patient's specific condition and the nature of the target antigen. In some cases, maintaining the TCR may be important for the therapy's effectiveness. In summary, TCR deficient CAR T cell therapy is a promising but complex approach aimed at reducing uh, uh, the cytokine release syndrome and other toxicities associated with CAR T cell therapy. While it has the potential to enhance safety by minimizing allo reactivity, it also presents challenge related to efficacy and immune function. The development of clinical application of TCR deficient CAR T cells are ongoing areas of research and their use should be carefully evaluated in clinical trials and based on the specific needs of each patient. And when uh, CTX110 goes through the clinical trial, which is in phase two right now, and potentially registrational trial, uh, all these aspects are being looked at by, uh, by FDA as well as uh, CRISPR Therapeutics' own uh, researchers. Of course, if a treatment is successful, the CAR T has to persist in the body. This is where the removal of MHC1 expression in the CAR T cell is helpful. MHC1 expression marks a cell for destruction by CD8 T cells. However, in theory, there is a possibility that the body's natural killer cells may see one of these CAR T cells without MHC1 expression and assume that it has been infected by a virus which has downgraded MHC1, it may decide to kill the CAR T cell. So there is that potential theoretical possibility. The other two well-established CAR T therapies in the market right now are Yescarta and Chimera, uh, apart from Bradyanzi. So uh, Yescarta and Chimera are also autologous. So there is no allogenic uh, CAR T therapy for CD19 plus uh, indications other than uh, the CTX110, which is in the pipeline in a very advanced stage right now. The list price of uh, Baryanzi was 410K uh, in 2021. I don't have the latest price. I couldn't find it. Yescarta is around two, uh, 424K and Chimera is around 475K per dose. In 2022, BMS made 122 million through Berianzi, while Gilead made 337 million from Yescarta, showing a growth of 6% over the previous year. Meanwhile, Chimera logged uh, 536 million uh, uh, billing uh, through Chimera, but it was, uh, I think, 9% below the previous year's uh, uh, gross. So uh, those are the numbers that I have here for autologous uh, therapies, which are not the first line, but the second line after radiation and other things have been tried. So if we think that autologous therapy can garner so much revenue, can you imagine what an off-the-shelf allogenic CTX110 can achieve? This happens to be a fully owned therapy of CRISPR therapeutics, and I believe that if the CRS um, syndrome is uh, controlled by CTX110, and if it presents a better patient experience, then it could become the frontline treatment for 
uh, CD19 related uh, cancers. So what is important for CRISPR in this case, as per my opinion, based on all that I have read so far, is that they may want to avoid uh, cytokine release syndrome while retaining the persistence of CAR T cell. Removing the TCR does help reduce CRS, but removing MHC1 probably may attract natural killer cells. So I believe they may be fine-tuning the MHC1 down regulation instead of total knockout. We'll find more as they publish data uh, from the clinical trials. So as per their Q2 earnings report, CRISPR Therapeutics continues to enroll and dose patients in a phase two single arm potentially registrational clinical trial of CTX110 and uh, its wholly owned allogenic uh, chimeric antigen receptor T cell uh, investigational therapy targeting CD19 plus B cell malignancies. Based on uh, encouraging preliminary data, CTX110 was granted RMAT designation by the FDA. That also means it has an opportunity for priority um, review. And um, we'll have to look forward to the PDUFA date for this one. And this could come in. This would come in very much on the heels of the Exacel approval. So, friends, I don't know about you, but I am feeling comfortable with my CRISPR holdings. Please let me have your feedback in the comment section. That's all for today. I'll be back soon on the next video. Please don't forget to subscribe and uh, join our uh, membership program. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.